You got this. Amen. 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 Everybody. I'm a close friend, one of Toya's best friends, but her mother considered me like her daughter. I never was considered a friend. And it's, it's ironic that I thought about this is Sunday, and every Sunday <laughs> we have Sunday dinner. This is crazy, me and the family. So when she got her degree, it was on a Sunday we had family dinner. When John passed, it was on a Sunday, we had family dinner. When my sister passed, we had dinner. It was on a Sunday. And three weeks before she got sick, we had dinner, and it was on a Sunday. So I got my memories with her and the family. And the crazy part is today, we're gonna have dinner with her on a Sunday. Amen. So I wrote a poem for her. God is called you home today. We and the family and friends don't know what to say. She lived a good life down here on earth. You know her true worth. She had a heart of gold. When they made her, they broke the mold. She always served you with a smile, integrity, and grace while looking you straight in the face. She loved her family with all her heart. Their love for her will never depart. Open up the gates and let her in at all costs because she was a queen, mother, and boss. Carry her and don't let her fall because we know this is your will and final call. God just know that she will truly be missed and we send her to you with a warm, gentle kiss. Amen. But praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. We greet you in the marvelous and wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ on behalf of your family at the Straight Gate International Church. Amen. We're under the leadership of Bishop Andrew and Pastor Vivica, Pastors Jonathan and David Merritt. Family, we just want you to know that God is all you need him to be during this hour. God provided an opportunity for me to fellowship with, with Reverend Carol while she was in the hospital. We had an opportunity to pray, uh, serve uh, the Lord's Supper, amen, and to just rejoice in the Lord. You see, we're spiritual beings. The apostle says, we know, therefore, if this earthly house is dissolved, we have a house we have a building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. So to be absent from these earthly houses is to be present with the Lord. Amen? Amen. So we rejoice today because we know that life is not over for Reverend Carol. She's absent from the body, but present with the Lord. Amen? Amen. We bring you some words of comfort from my pastors. They write, and we just want to say, to our dear brother Mark, how much we love you and appreciate your faithful service. Our pastor's right, dear Amos family. Greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the Lord of glory and our soon coming King. May the precious promise of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, comfort you and the home going of your loved one, Reverend Carol Amos. Blessed are they that do die in the Lord. Amen, said the Spirit. They shall rest from their labor, and their works do follow them. We want you to know that we love you very much and thank God for you. Remember, you are never alone. Jesus is with you always. Again, our prayers are with you. That is love, grace, and strength. Fortify you and grant you with his peace in this hour. Yours in the yoke of the master. Bishop Andrew, Pastor Vavika Merritt, and the Straight Gate International Church family. 
Our prayer is that God will continue to embrace you with his loving kindness, his tender mercy, and this hour. Be blessed. Amen. I met Miss Carol about 46 years ago, and my family, you know, sometimes the blood transcends that, you know, more the relationship transcends that more than just the blood, you know, and Jesus said, who is my brother? Uh, and, he, and, and, he, and he says, he who does the will of my father. And then it goes on to say, he who loves one another. That's how you know that you are his. You know, I, 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 I thank Miss Carol for my family here because the stock, you know, the apple don't fall far from the tree, but I know that the, the, where they came from, the stock was good. Cherokee, Mark, Toya, and all the family, down through the years, nothing could dissolve our love for one another. Nothing could happen to make us fall out. And I, and, and, and I saw the transition from that day. But my friend John, John passed previously to her. That was my best friend. And because of him, and because of where he came from, he showed me things, and he showed me some things, and I, and, and I believe it came from his learning from Miss Carol, all right? But he, he, he really, because of where, what he did, I'm where I'm at today in a lot of ways. So I thank God for Miss Carol today, and every time I've ever seen her, it was a smile. When I first met her, she had them lined up, all of them, huh? Time to take the cash draw. And I said, it's time for me to go home. <laughs> but anyway, yes, Miss Carol, we love you. See you on the other side. This is my classmate from the urban school. I'm the one from Missouri. Everybody else is from Detroit. So this is Reverend Brenda Harger. And uh, there were three of us who were the first to graduate from the online program. In two th we started in 2008 and graduated in 2012. And Reverend Carroll was very instrumental in us becoming ministers. And one of those was Reverend Carroll's classmate, who I named earlier, who passed on, Reverend Helen Saunders' daughter. Reverend Karen Saunders couldn't be here. The three musketeers, the two of the musketeers yeah, are here. We're here. So we're representing Reverend Karen as yeah. well. She's the Unity of Omaha, which she, she followed in her mother's footsteps. So Reverend Brenda Harger. Ah. Good afternoon. And I'm proud to say right now, Reverend Doctor, I did it at 70. Uh, you can do anything because I did it at 70. Um, Carol, Carol and I were friends before uh, I was a member here. I, I had known her for a while. And uh, I was making a trip to Greece. This is coming out. Let me take it out. Okay. Keep your arm straight. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I was making a trip to Greece and I called Carol and I told her I'd call her when I got back and share my adventures. And while I was in Greece, I saw angels in the clouds. There were just wonderful, wonderful spirits everywhere. And I came back and I, I called Carol and I told her, and she said, God's speaking to you. Listen, God's speaking to you. And so she was up in the pulpit speaking. I was right in fourth, fifth row over here. And 
she got off of the topic that she was addressing for, for the sermon for that day, and she started talking about her school. Now, we had never talked about her school. And while she was talking about the urban ministerial school, I heard a voice. I was sitting right there. And a voice said, call them. And I turned to my friend sitting next to me, and I said, call who? And she had no idea what I was talking about. And so after service, I went up to Carol, and I told her what happened. And she says, oh, come with me. And right away, she called Reverend Mosley. And Reverend Mosley said, we need to talk to you. And now that was Sunday. By Friday, I was a student in the school. Now, the, uh, an important factor is Sandra and Karen were the only other two students. They needed three. They needed three to open for the semester. I had no intention of being a, uh, a minister. I'm a business person. Always have been. My father was an AME minister, but it never occurred to me that I would be a minister. And I kept saying, I'm not sure about this. I don't know. <laughs> but I was called. And Carol heard, Carol heard what I heard. She understood what I heard. And I am so grateful for having her as a friend and a mentor and I'm going to miss her terribly. But I know where she is, so right now I am rejoicing. Amen. 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 Good afternoon, family. Good afternoon. My name is Betty Barton, also known as Ankanesara Kapara. And that's important because our, the Imani Ra drum family, knows and remembers how much Reverend Carol loved black history, comedic studies, and women in history. I just love your family for giving us an opportunity to share our story. Because if each one of you took the time, we'd be here all night, wouldn't we? Yeah. But I just want to tell you just two things. She and Gwen Scales, a few years ago, decided they wanted a women's conference. And she came to me and said, Betty, Antonesita, we would like the lady drummers to perform at the women's conference. And so at that time, I too was guided by God to give the name of the women's drummers, Lotus Ladies. And we're going to be performing next month at the book study from 12 to 2 on March 26. It's Reverend Carol was the catalyst for the women's drummers. Could we have Imani Ra drummer stand? There, was, there were five of us today. And you know, it's not by accident that Reverend Carol's homegoing, thank you drummers, was on African Pride Sunday. You think that's by accident? <laughs> Sunday again, my sister. And I believe that right now, she's up drumming with the angels. Yeah, yeah, okay. 
can everybody hear me okay? Yes. Well, what I'm going to remember most about Reverend Carroll is I keep a true Lent classes. Oh, yeah. And Lent is coming up. Amen. So I guess the prayer chaplain is going to have to do it without Reverend Carroll, but um, I still have a lot of literature she gave us, so we'll be using it, especially the ones with Ch Chaka on it. But I just want to say that I really appreciate her class. She was so classy. And she had a way of teaching a lesson that broke it down to you, and when you left, you understood what she was trying to say to you. And so I appreciate that. And all the special talks that I had with her, just one-on-one. -on -one. What we have in common is that we're both Tauruses. So I can imagine what kind of mother she was. Because <laughs> I have two daughters and I'm a Taurus, so I know how that rule go. But I just want to thank you guys for giving us this opportunity giving me a reason to dress up and look cute and represent Reverend Carol today. So we just thank you guys. We're going to appreciate her and the prayer chaplains will be doing Keep a True Lit in honor of Reverend Carol. And thank you. Hello, everyone. Hello. I'm Angela or Angie, Carol's firstborn. Amen. On behalf of myself and my family, we thank you for celebrating her life Amen. today with us. And I do remind you, this is a celebration. Yes, it is. It's, it's what she wanted. You know, I'm not a minister, but the Bible does say that a man is recognized by his fruit. Look at what my mother produced. Here, 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 here. That tells you everything about who she was. My mother, my Reverend Carol. Amen. Where are you? <laughs> Was one of the strongest women I've ever known. She had me when she was 15. Here, here. And mothered seven of us. The love for her children and her desire to be a positive role model for us fueled her acceptance to serve in the ministry. Reverend Carol Amos inspired, mentored, and touched the lives of many. She inspired me to be a great mother. an author and taught me the art of resiliency. Her footprint and legacy is rich and her seed is blessed. Amen. Amen. She had so much love Enough love inside of her to love us while loving and serving the world. Amen. 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 We, your children, we love you. We appreciate Amen. your sacrifice for us. And we respect the choices you made. And we thank you for being our mom. Sending you love and light. Please stand. Please stand. Please stand. Please stand.
We're just about finished, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we have one more proclamation we want to give to Reverend Carroll, and that's going to be presented by our own Effie Gordy. You can sit, please. Please sit. Hello, everyone. Giving honor to Christ, who is the head of my life. My name is Effie Gordy. I'm the operations manager here. And I just wanted to say a few words about Reverend Carroll before I read the resolution. Um, I worked with Reverend Carroll here closely, and she was always just a loving person. Uh, in two, 2018, we went to Jamaica. A bunch of us went to Jamaica together, and Reverend Carol and her family were there. And even on vacation, every morning, she led a meditation. We got up, and we went down to the beach, and she led us in meditation. A few days after she passed, uh, I saw my message light blinking on my phone. And so I, I took the message. And it was her voice. And she was saying, Effie, um, can you send me some of the Unity calendars? Because I use those Unity calendars all year long to document and to keep up with what I need to do. And she wanted her white stone as well. So that tells me that even in the hospital, in her last days, she did not give up. Amen. She was planning. She wanted that calendar to use for the rest of the year. So with that being said, I'm going to read the church resolution. February 19th, 2023. Resolution of respect honoring the life of Carol Ford Amos. According to his tender mercy, God, who is infinite in wisdom, has seen fit to move from our midst our beloved sister in Christ, Carol Ford Amos, on the 31st day of January in this year of 2023. Whereas Carol began her pursuit in ministry at the newly founded Unity Urban Ministerial School, where she was the very first student to graduate from there as a part of the Detroit Great Eight in 1982 and was ordained minister at Unity Village in Kansas City, Missouri in 1983. She became affectionately known as Reverend Carroll. And whereas Reverend Carroll's ministry ministerial career spans over 30 years, she came to Detroit Unity in 2007, where she served as an adjunct minister before being hired as the associate minister. She served the membership and congregation as a minister, a prayer chaplain, a counselor, and a friend. Additionally, she stepped up as interim minister during periods of time which the temple was without a senior minister. Amen. We will lovingly remember her statement, always view things 
through soft eyes. And whereas the passing of our sister has left us with a broken heart, we acknowledge and accept the will of God. We know within our hearts that our beloved sister is comforted and at peace by knowing God as her source and truth. She has put on a cloak of invisibility, absent from her body, but gloriously present with the Lord. She was very well loved and will be sorely missed. And whereas we believe the words of Jesus in John 14 that encourages us to let not your heart be, be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go and prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. Therefore, be it resolved that we know the deep loss and sorrow that Reverend Carroll's transition begets, and that we embrace the family because all of us have a common bond that will connect us for the rest of our lives. We cannot replace our sister Carol, no. but we will attempt to demonstrate her love. Be it further resolved, we know that the light of God surrounds her, the love of God enfolds her, the power of God protects her, and the presence of God watches over her. Wherever she is, God is. Well. Let it, let it be known that a copy of this signed resolution will be given to the family with the original being recorded into the church archives. Amen. Humbly submitted, Detroit Unity Temple, Gregory C. Geis, Senior Minister. Amen. Amen. Come on, we can do better than that. Let's give it a hand for that. And now we're going to bring up our very own Sandra Bomar with a musical selection. And I will tell you, we won't be much longer. Just bear with us as we go through this celebration. Bring it home, Sandra. Check one, check. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Turn it up a little bit. Up a little. I like to say before I sing this song. Reverend Amos meant so much to me. I lost my daughter last year, and she lost her son. She would pray with me, talk to me. We would share the prayers together. She was so awesome to me. The night, uh, the evening that she before she passed away, I called the hospital and talked to Cherokee. I know Reverend Geis had just left and he said she was non-responsive. When I called Cherokee, she said, Sandra Beaumont, my mom wants to say something to you. She said, my mom is talking. And she said, Sandra Boma, I want you to sing Somewhere Over the Rainbow for Me. 
Oh, I love her so much. <laughs> Somewhere over the rainbow, way up high, there's a land that I heard of once in a lullaby. <laughs> Somewhere over the rainbow Skies are blue And the dreams that you dare to dream Really do come true Someday I wish upon a star Wake up where the clouds are Far behind me Where troubles melt Like lemon drops Away above the chimney tops Is where you find me Over the rainbow Bluebirds fly Birds fly Over the rainbow Why then, oh why can't I Birds fly over the rainbow. Why then, oh, why can't I? We go have. Someday I wish upon a star and wake up where the clouds are far behind me. Where troubles melt like lemon drops Away above the chimney tops Is where you'll find me yeah, Somewhere Ooh. Over the rainbow huh. Bluebirds fly Birds fly high over the rainbow. Why then, oh, why can't I? Birds fly over the rainbow. Why then, oh, why can't I? If pretty little bluebirds fly above the rainbow, why, oh, why can't Cousins in that room. We have one one final person would like to make a comment, and then I would say we'll be moving very quickly because there's a wonderful feast prepared for people downstairs, and they went to too much work, and we still have a concert. And I'll make sure that I will be very short as well.
when she said that Carol told her she was going to sing, I knew I had to stand up because she kept telling me I was going to speak. And I'm not a speaker. And uh, it's just been such an honor and a privilege to have her in my life for almost 30 years. And uh, I'm grateful to have heard and know her family. I've heard about all of you. And I was going to speak, but I felt like everything had been said already. <laughs> you know, like, but uh, I just, when I heard that gal standing up, she just, I couldn't really tell her no. And uh, in the last few weeks, she kept telling me no, I couldn't come over. And so for the week before she passed, I kind of didn't talk to her too much. And she was, because it's like, I am going over there. And because if she'd tell me no, then I'd tell the girls I'm coming. Then I'd be like, I can't come now. The force field's up. She told me no. And so it was a great, great privilege to be there on her last few nights. We didn't know it was going to be that quick. I came on a Friday and I had a big suitcase and I had luggage and all of this stuff because mm. I thought we were going to go home Saturday and do stuff that we do. And um, anyway, so we didn't, we didn't, didn't know. We didn't know Mark was there till 1030 on Saturday night. We had the best visit. And it was amazing. And she was talking about how she was going to go try treatments that Mark had researched. And um, anyway, so I didn't want to let her down. And even though we know all this spiritual crap, <laughs> we're still physical beings. And I know I can go to the source and get the answer. But in the meantime, you know, there is that physical uh, angst that comes up when you realize oh I can't you know so I do also know that I have to get through the grief and the suffering because I know that's the only way she'll hear me and that we'll hear each other because we can't do that when we're suffering we have to be in God and we have to be in love so I know I will and I just love you guys all and I'm so so grateful I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful. I'm sorry. I know it's two minutes, but I'm so, I'm so grateful. I, I just got to say, because of the book, the book, The Stumbling Into Greatness, if you think, she said in there when she was 21, she's like, I just want to die. And she knew she could, and she made a choice to live, and she chose to live for you kids. And through that, her, her uh, willingness to live, then the teacher appeared, which brought her to unity, which brought her to me <laughs> and, mm. and everyone else. So I just, uh, I'm just really, really glad to be here and see everyone here and know we're all in the, the same uh, fan club and know what a real honor it was and what a gift. And uh, yeah, we'll be celebrating with her for many years, but. Thank you. Oh. I would say, as I stated, I will not be very long because we've been here a long time celebrating, but let me say this as I center myself for this very short moment. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Show me thy ways, O Lord, and teach me thy path, and lead me in thy truth, and teach me. For thou art the God of my salvation, on thee do I wait all the day. Lord, I call upon you to allow me to be your vessel in this moment. And with this I say, thank you, God. I have to start off by saying something very quickly. This isn't my lesson or my words. Let's call this Reverend Carol Ford Amos' final sermon. Because what has happened is her life has already been demonstrated and talked about. 
And all of us have played a part as she's orchestrating this wonderful, magnificent sermon. The celebration of life is not ours, it's hers. And she worked through us and fed us and lived as a part of who we are. Last night, as I was studying, I wanted to know the meaning of her name. And her name simply means a song. And I thought about that, that she has been living a song all her life. There's been moments of jazz, there's been moments of the blues. There's been times when she was bringing forth an eloquent, wonderful voice. And as I was thinking about this, a song came to my mind that I want to share very quickly with you. James Cleveland wrote this tune. For those of you who know that, our life is a song. Without a song. For those of you who understand that, your life is a song. Have you understood those words? that we had those days when things may seem to go wrong and she would say when you're living your life right God gives you a sign If you know this song, raise your hand right now. No, no. See, Reverend Carroll was that song for all of us. That field of corn. Some of us might even hear Martha Jean words at that same time. to play that because when I knew that her name mean a song y'all seem like y'all know about that her song was called Stumbling into Greatness her song was about the fact that I was going to raise my children. And give my dedication to God. You see, Reverend Carroll stepped over into another plateau. She was a light giver, if you didn't know that. She studied so that she could give light to people who were having trouble. If you didn't know her, you didn't know her, her song. But if you knew her, oh, you know her song. I've seen at times when Cherokee stood up for her and Mark and all of her children and grandchildren heard her song. So on this day, we celebrate her song. Carol learned what makes the grass grow. It's called love. See, love allows the children to grow. Love allows that opportunity. Y'all know what I'm feeling. Y'all know what I'm feeling. Because see, to know Carol, you have to go deeper than just the surface level. You had to go to the depth of where she was coming from. I 
get some people singing over there. There ain't no love at all. Ain't no love at all. Unless. Unless God gives you a song. If you live long enough in this world and you're true to God, God will give you a song. And all of our songs are different. And I only know that Reverend Carroll's song have been played today. So we celebrate her. We echo her thoughts. There was no more for me to say because her song has already been written. It was written before we met her. God ordained her in the very beginning. He played every aspect of her life before her and she made a choice. Difficult for others to understand and some who didn't understand it. She's withstood so much but yet she stood in her glory. I remember the words of Dr. King that says, if I can help someone along the way. Carol was willing to do that and give you whatever she had. And you would say, I don't need that. And she would just put it in your hand and tell you to go ahead. Sometimes we honor a blessing, but on this day, I would call it her last sermon that you performed that you said, that you demonstrated. We are here because of this wonderful, magnificent woman. And if there was anything we can do, I just hope that our song will be as true as her song. I hope that our song have the melody and the commitment that she shared with all of us. Many forgot that she even had a master's, well-educated, that she traveled the world, and it's a model of how the children rallied around her, even in the difficult times. You see, you got to have a special song in your heart because one song will hear another song. So you gravitate to that. I'm not going to go much further than that because if you listen, if you have been here today, if you opened yourself up to her song, please be open up to the song inside of yourself. Some of us may want to change the song we've written, change the words, and open the door for a new song of love, of peace, of justice, of forgiveness, of hope and joy. God gave us that song we called Carol Ford Amos. And it was a song written for us to hear and see. As we get ready to leave this place to go downstairs for a celebration, I want you to know that the family wanted you to understand that they're creating a scholarship fund in the name of her mother. And you'll hear more about that from them as they gather together to meet, to acknowledge that they wanted me to say that. You see, all of us are threads in this wonderful beam of light that allows us to stay connected together. And as one person moves into that next experience of light, that light is given to all of us so that we can rally. Her task as a light giver was amazing. When Dr. Kiefer was down the street, she studied light. And she would talk about the light coming from her hands. And she will pour it into you. You see, I don't really know all the things Carol may know, but I do know this. She was a student of truth that practiced the principles of what God has given her. She had to go over her hills and her valleys, but she wound up never denying her truth or running from it, facing them 
with the glory and greatness of the God that was within her. So we stand here together to say thank you, Carol. So let us all stand as we give a blessing to her right now because she's with us. So I invite you to stretch forth your hands and know that right here, right now, in this very moment, her presence is with us. So let us say, Reverend Carol, Reverend Carol. we love you, we bless you, we appreciate you, and we behold the Christ in you. Give Carol a hand, everybody.